So, William, as you probably know, but no one else does, I'm going to have a little bit of a surge tomorrow, a little surgery, uh, a little bit of a choppy poo. Yes, you are. Yes. I'm having uh, my elbows reassigned to be my knees and vice versa. <laughs> I'm going to swap it around and see what happens. I'm so curious. Uh, that's awesome. It's the wonders of working at a uni with a medical school. I would like to know. I, I, I would really like to know. Yeah. Like if you if you had totally dodgy knees, yeah. as, 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 I, as, as, as you do, yeah. as you do, and, and like there was a dead guy and you're like, could I just borrow those elbows? Like I'd like to yeah. know for a while. And then I'll have his knees later. I'll do it. I'll talk to them tomorrow. I, I don't want Medicare paying for this. I don't want any public health system paying for this. But but I want to get medical insurance that would allow crazy plus, shit. plus wacky plus wacky benefits. It's just like <laughs> dot 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 anything I can come up with <laughs> that's actually possible. Experimental elbow knee surgery. Yeah, it's just a swap. It's a it's a uh, reassignment. It's I'm, joint reassignment. I'm I'm just trying to visualize right yeah. now what it would actually be. Yeah, both our arms would suddenly look a lot thicker in the middle. <laughs> We're not small thighed men. So anyway, um, look, it's a, it's what I'm getting. It's not my first surgery. It's a pretty short one. Okay. Yep. Pretty routine. Okay. Yep. So that's cool. And to be honest, I'm kind of looking forward to the holiday afterwards, as I have mentioned to you before. It's not a holiday. No, well, it's recuperation. recuperation. You're on yeah. sick leave, not annual leave. No, well, I, the, my last annual leave, I got sick anyway. So this is, this is like a tradition. Oh, okay, now. getting it back. Yeah, fair yeah, enough. Yeah. And so um, I'm also looking forward to, you know, no one's going to harass me because I've been under the knife and, you know, drugs. Yes. So that's good. Well, people might attempt to harass you, but you can legitimately ah, good luck with not that. even be close to good harassing. Good luck. Not be harassable. Give it a go. Um, also, though, of course I'm human, so, you know, I've got a, a, a little nerve or a little thought or two about it because, you know, it's, it's, it's not a big deal, but it's something. Yeah, you, you're going under the, the wacky doctor's knife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All uh, these, all they're these gonna, strangers. They're going to cut you open and see what's on your insides. I'm hoping they already know. No, no, they don't. <laughs> they don't. My fervent <laughs> wish. <laughs> What's going to be in here? Yeah. Which we open the back to get to the front, right? Is that <laughs> how it works? Uh, so I did, of course, with, to, to kind of calm myself and you know, put myself back in uh, order. I did what any genius in my position would do, so I read some tales about medical procedures and doctors. <laughs> of course you bloody did. Fucking genius. <laughs> it was a great idea. A great you, idea. you read all of the boring ones where the surgery went perfectly yes, well. Yes, And And yes. the doctor uh, woke the person up afterwards and said, this was amazing, best surgery ever, yeah, my best, your the best, this is this is gold standard, beyond gold standard. Can you see through this paper? You've read, that's amazing. <laughs> sadly, sadly makes for boring podcast material, I think. Uh, should I change? <laughs> I'm sorry. So you're going to tell me some of the... the Well, here's the thing. A few quotes stuck in my head. These aren't bad <laughs> ones. There's a few quotes from places. Mostly from a, a website called thehealthy.com and um, one from a guy called... I think it's a guy. It, it's smelt like a guy, but I'm not positive. Dr. Makari. Um, Dr. Makari is... Being, That's last name. I'm just not... Yeah, they didn't yeah. give a first name for this one. Others in this place gave you the full schmear. So you're saying smelt like a guy just because you're sexist and you, you yes. just assume doctor well, is guy? Men are doctors, aren't Okay, they? that's all right. Like, uh, all men are doctors. And all dogs are boys and all yes. cats are girls. Yes. Technical, it's... That's yeah, that's just, that's a science. It's a science podcast. So from... Uh, it's not right, listener. It's, right. it's not true at all. It's not a science podcast. It is a science podcast, but it's not true about doctors oh, the other or, thing. or dogs. So Dr. Makary, who shall be called them or they, said, uh, I always ask at national conferences of doctors, how many of you know another doctor who should not be practicing medicine because, <laughs> because he is too dangerous? That's why I assumed it was a man. Ah, uh, okay. His response was, every hand goes up. <laughs> <laughs> cool, 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 cool. But you do, though. You yeah. do. Like, yeah. in any practice, <laughs> in any practice, uh, yeah, I know, I know, listener, you might be surprised, I know podcasters who shouldn't be podcasters. They somehow commit oh. crimes against humanity oh, names. in their podcast. Or potentially academics, to quote our day job. There may be Ooh. some who, again, should uh, not. Be less in that job than others. Another one I thought was good, uh, good scene setting here. Paul Ruggieri, MD, author of Confessions of a Surgeon, The Good, The Bad and The Complicated, <laughs> Life Behind the OR Doors. So it's not so bad. Surgeons are control freaks. When things don't go our way in the operating room, we can have outbursts. Some of us curse. Some throw instruments. Others have tantrums. Are you saying there's cursing in the operating theatre? Cuss and words. The, the potty language? It misbehaves. Whoopsie-doo. So it smells a bit like they're people who can fuck up and who can get mad and do all these other things. Oh, yeah. So this is what this reinforced me. It's like, surgeons are people, which is both yay and I, 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 You know, if I'm, I'm one, of the, one of the other people. In the operating theatre, anaesthetists, uh, nurses, all sorts of janitors, uh, you know, just uh, videographer. Yes, all of those people standing around while the surgeon's doing something, and it's just Musicians. that moment where you hear, "Oh, fuck. yeah, 
Oh, oh fuck. Yeah, or like, what, what is it from uh, The Simpsons? What the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, I don't know if I've told you this story. Um, uh, when I was born, apparently the doctor said to my mother, I, I have I, not heard your birth story. It's, it's just a tiny birth story. Most people don't have birth story. I mean, people do. Uh, they were born, they come out the other end, you don't know. But, uh, but uh, the doctor said, I've never seen that before. I know. William. I can't tell you. I can't tell you. I can't tell you what bonus thing it was that he. You're you're the guy with two ding dongs, aren't you? You're the the guy. I'll just leave it hanging. I'll just leave it hanging. You can guess guess what amazing amazing thing it was that he had never seen before. An extra limb. Yes. Well, that didn't happen to me. But so um, as I was digging through the surgery stuff, realized there are people. So it led me down a rabbit hole. And it was a rabbit hole of surgeons not always doing great things in different ways. Oh, my God. So in this episode, what I have is three stories about some very different uh, oopsies. And a little science. Yes. Yes. Kind of. Welcome to the Wholesome Show, the Science Rabbit Hole podcast. Mm. For people who sit up the back of the rabbit hole. Yes. And uh, we will ask and or tell you ridiculous questions or stories so that you don't have to find them yourselves. We're here for you, listener. Yeah. Wholesome show is me, Will Grant. I you've learned how to, you've learned how to you drive anymore. this thing? You've learned how to... I'm like a genius. Uh, I just touched the buttons. <laughs> <laughs> I, he he had to drive the podcast for uh, another one the other day, and suddenly he's like touching my buttons. I'm going to spin the deck. The wholesome show is brought to you by this. You didn't even say what your name was. You didn't say what your name was. I did. I say Will Grant, and then you oh, did then, you then you press the button. My name is Dr. Roderick Griffin. Please don't touch me there, Lamberts. <laughs> and the wholesome show, mm. this professional podcast mm-hmm. of anyone can touch the buttons, is brought to you by I the know. Australian National Centre. For the public awareness of science. And podcast decks now that we both have, well, you probably have 80% knowledge and i got nine. <laughs> but the Rode Podcaster TM ch- platform deck thing is so good you don't need to know anything. There you go. Even dummies can. Even we can. That should be the slogan, even dummies can. <laughs> it's kind of been done. <laughs> okay, story one. Are you sitting uncomfortably? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This one's fine. This is yeah, warm enough. I'm just, I'm just reminding the listener as well that you are, you are going in for the cut, cut tomorrow. <laughs> you know, you're the one going in for the cut, cut, chop, chop, sip, snip, no, uh, so, so. I, th- I thought I'd, you know, keep it relevant. You know, because they, they say, you know, work with what you know, tell stories from your own life. See, I, I have no surgeries planned at the moment. I don't doubt in my future I will, uh, sure. but uh, I can I can be kind of sanguine about all of this, you know. Because it's not you. It's not me. No, these not are me. great stories though. All right, go. So all of them are going to be fine because these are either one thing or another and none of them are the things that I will experience. You know, listener, there's this weird thing when you're watching a reality show and you think, oh my God, this looks a little bit dangerous. And then you think, no, they wouldn't have aired it if they actually died. Like, yeah, they, you know, there's yeah. stories about the Brazilian reality show where the, a helicopter crashed and eight people died or or another one, there was a big brother in the Netherlands where there was a, a horrible um, murder or really? something. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Wow. I, I have actually looked up the deaths, deaths on reality shows, Wikipedia site. Yeah, there's, there's quite remarkably a few. Remarkably high. But, 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 but you sit there normally and you think, no, they wouldn't air it. If, if that mm, person, mm. Uh, if something actually truly horrible happened. Yeah. But I don't know if the Wholesome Show stands to those ethics. No, we don't. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll only tell you one thing. No one dies in these. Okay, cool. Ev- everyone lives. All right, all right. Then I Whether can, they want to. Then I can sufficiently laugh at what is happening. I'll laugh your ass I'm not going. I'm not laughing at a, a terrible victim here. No, 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 just victim, but not terrible. For example, cool. 2018, early 2018, 28-year-old... Uh, Gunshum, he only has one name, he's like Madonna. Gunshum? Yeah, Indian chap. Okay. He'd been driving a school bus full of children in Uttar Pradesh. Yep. When a herd of cattle suddenly appeared on the road, as uh, they do. Uh, yeah, sure. He swerved to avoid the animals and lost control of the bus, and the bus flipped. Brake don't swerve. Bus flipped. Bus flipped. Damn. Damn. I, I'm, I'm instantly, I'm caring for him, but I'm caring more about the school cows? children. Cows? Oh, school, school children. children. School children. I was worried about the cows. I forgot there were kids straight away. <laughs> I was like a bus full of school children. It was like oh, here's a dude driving a car, <laughs> and then I'm like, oh fuck yeah, these children. I hope the car's okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so he was rushed to hospital. Uh, when his relatives came to visit, uh, they told new, no, local news outlets uh, they were horrified to find out 
that his own leg was being used as a headrest <laughs> slash pillow. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. And to no. clarify, this is not no. because uh, Gun Chum is very flexible. He was not a yoga master. No, no, no. Yeah. No, 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 no. So, so I'm going to I'm gonna play you? devil's advocate and I'm just going <laughs> to say maybe yeah. uh, he had become sans leg. Uh, mm -hmm. A little bit uh, delegged, mm -hmm. and they were just keeping it next to him. Ah, uh, that's what they say. Keep it cold. Put no, it behind your head. No, but it's not like you want a hospital that has like the the whole body room and the leg room. Yeah, grab and, a leg and, for and, me. And you, and you get a pile yeah. of legs. Yeah, like yeah. you want to keep them close. Like if there's if they're yeah, yeah, yeah. you, you know you have a school one. bus incident yeah. and there is a lot of delegging. Uh, you want to mm. keep legs close to yeah, maybe. Own, owners as much as possible. Sounds practical. It's like keep your handbag with you. Yeah, you don't have to go rummaging. That, that will come up later, actually, in a different story. Um, so the incident came to public attention after images and videos circulated showing the patient on a stretcher with his amputated limb as a headrest. Oh, God. Um, at the hospital, his relatives implored hospital staff to offer a pillow. <laughs> uh, implored. Can I please have a pillow? No, we're using that pillow. This, this hospital is a bring-your-own-pillow hospital, ma'am. Uh, it sounds like it's a bring-your-own-a-lot. So um, oh. apparently their entreaties were ignored. Uh, one relative, Janaka, Janaki, sorry, Prasad, I repeatedly asked the doctors to intervene, but they refused. All of intervention is get a pillow. Um, eventually she said she went to the markets to buy uh, Gunshama pillow. Things got so bad that the patient's family transferred him to a private hospital. The and, administrator, and the leg? I don't know if the leg went with him. The leg was not reattachable. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So that's a different thing. Sure. That's true. It's no, not I, the same I had as at attachable. Least, I had at least plausible, yeah, yeah, yeah. like it's a keep together thing yeah, yeah. and we're going to sew. We just got to get the sewing just machine. Rest your noggin thing. here, yeah, mate, just, that just way. Yeah. Keep, okay. That's different. It's a feature, not a bug. Um, so the head administrator of the hospital in which the pillow incident or lack thereof occurred said, we have set up a four-member committee to find out who put the severed leg under the patient's head. Because <laughs> if anything's going to solve a problem, you know it's though, bureaucracy. You know, though, there is, there, there is, you know, there's a whole lot of detective shows. It's all about murders. There are. I think, I think there, there should be more detective shows about bureaucratic fuck-ups. Like, when, when did the... Don't we live in enough of one of those? <laughs> I know, but it would be great. It would be great. Who, who signed the wrong form? Who put the leg as the pillow? You have very interesting kinks. <laughs> I mean, look, yeah, no, I think we live in one right now. Or maybe two. So um, they set up the committee. The, uh, the administrator said the patient was given immediate medical attention because, and this is how the quote ran, the doctor looked for something to raise his head. So the attendant to the doctor or the patient grabbed the nearest thing. Yes, I found something. Problem solved. Thick and pillow-like, I suppose, comparatively. Um, the doctors who were involved and two nurses were suspended. Interestingly, this report doesn't say how many doctors, just the doctors and two nurses. Um, but to be fair, uh, this incident also essentially highlights India's struggle to provide adequate medical care in many of its regions. So the state uh, yes. hospitals don't have a lot of money, particularly in an area like Uttar Pradesh. No, no, no. I, I, I totally get it. I totally get it that uh, the lack of lack of facilities can make you make uh, some Improvise. cut some corners, cut Mag some corners. You're MacGyvering. Yes, totally. Uh, but I think in the options here, it's um, find a pillow, uh, yeah. find a pillow substitute that is fine, not use a pillow, and then the fourth option, use their, <laughs> use their amputate. Like, yeah. I, I, I would settle for any of the first three. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with no pillow. I figure I, in a car crash, there'd be old tyres or something. There, something. there could be some, you know, a, a pill, a, I don't know, a, a pair of pants you could stuff with Bundle grass. Up. Yeah, yeah, you get your sleeping bag cover and roll shove in your up, old shirt. Yeah, roll know. up your trousers or something. Um, well, so he's not using half of his trousers, so cut that off and use... There you go, see? You are a problem solver. That's why you're, you're a critical thinking thought leader of thinking, <laughs> at least in this room. So there you go. Three three good options. I, yeah. I and, and that fourth one is not due to lack of facilities because there is no. one there. One no. of those options, the no pillow option. Yeah, that, that exists everywhere. Yeah, exactly. You don't have I to mean, be I'm rich, looking around rich now. or poor. Yeah, we're in that world now. We're in the no pillow option right now. But we do have four legs. That's true. So, you know, imp again, this is MacGyvering uh, Four pillows. Uttar Pradesh style. So his situation was terrible and it was weird, but you could argue kind of mitigating circumstances and it wasn't intentional cruelty. I don't think it was intentional I'm, cruelty. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not quite there with you on the mitigating circumstances, but so anyway. 
Well, then, then the next one you'll be happy with. <laughs> that's one. Number two, we're going to move to the UK <coughs> now because mm-hmm. you know that's, we can't travel in the world, but we can travel with our minds. Mm-hmm. Uh, Simon Bramhall, 53-year-old surgeon, worked as a liver, spleen, and pancreatic surgeon for 12 years at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Birmingham. Yep. West Midlands. He also tutored medical students, supervised postgrad students. So, you know, he was into it. Doing is, is, is the surgery uh, liver, spleen, and pancreatic? I get they're all... Yeah. I mean, do they associate things that are all roughly in the same bit of your body? You go, well, you know how to cut into that bit, so you do those things. But they're not the same organ. Well, no, they're not the same. They have different names and everything. Spleen is one of those ones I don't think you need. I think it's just a spare part. Really? Yeah, spleens come out and get ruptured all the time. That's true. Oh, is it appendix, I thought, was the most... Um, Useless organ. That's what they say. It's good oh, for no. capturing things. Of course. But the spleen, uh, what I heard when <coughs> I took a dive uh, as a fledgling snowboarder trying to use a um, uh, T-bar, mm-hmm. it was very common, I found out once I smashed myself in the back when I went to the emergency room to say, what the fuck's going on? They said, snowboarder? Yeah. Did you try and ride a T-bar? I said, yeah. That happens all the time. Oh, bruised so the, like spleen. The, the, the bar of the T-bar. Yeah, so you twist jams and into fall the... and smack your spleen. So oh. bruised spleen is very common. Oh, I wonder if I've got that. Do. I, do, I don't know. Come with me to the hospital tomorrow. We'll get them to check you out. <laughs> this is buy one, get one free situation. Do you mind if my buddy's here anyway? I mean, come <laughs> on. So anyway, uh, yeah, Simon Bramhill was working on those things. He was a tutor, supervisor, etc. Sorry, tutor, te- teacher. He made headlines in 2010. Okay. He performed a life-saving transplant operation for a patient with a liver that was recovered from a private plane crash in Birmingham. So... Oh, were, the patient was recovered, or no, the, no, the, or the liver. liver. So the, liver the plane came. that was delivering the liver crashed. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh okay. No. I, yeah. Yes. Wow. Okay. So we did the surgery in midair as they were falling. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. It's very Black Widow. Black Widow. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, she does t- a lot. There's, there's a lot of midair. You stop telling me that, or I will tell you what happened in the latest Loki. There's a midair. I'll tell surgery. you. No, don't do that. No, no, no. You know, two can play your game. There's no midair surgery. No, I didn't think there was, and there wasn't here either. Um, so the two parts were hurt, but the liver was undamaged, which allowed the operation to go ahead. That's and amazing. He said at the time, it was amazing. That was actually his words. And, and, and of course, if it's sitting there and it says, you know, organ, organ box, you know, organ yeah. for transplant. Oh, dear. Organ. No, but no one is sitting there thinking, okay, burn the wreckage. Uh, it's all a write-off. You, mm. you go, well, let's see what we can salvage. You have a rummage. That's, that's <laughs> you get some of the little drinks. You might find an organ in an ice box. And a pilot's hat. You grab the pilot's oh, hat. Oh, fuck yeah, you do. If only I had a head that would fit. I'd love a pilot's hat. There must be large-headed pilots. No, none of us. That's why I couldn't be one. I said, you realise it'll expand even more when you're flying. We can't have a uniform for you. You look too, you look too casual. No one will take you seriously. So that was in 2010, and you know, it made the made the headlines. Everyone was very impressed. That's really in, cool. Yeah. Uh, in December 2017, he was in the news again. Yeah. Yeah. More livers falling out of the sky. No, 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 no. Um, he just pleaded guilty to two counts of assault by beating. Oh, oh, uh, okay. Uh, you know, everyone's take life takes a turn. Are you going to tell me this is some sort of liver-related beating? I'm not going to tell you anything. I've finished. Thank you for joining us. Stop it. So um, why was he uh, pleading guilty to this? So in 2013, he'd done a liver transplant on two very special people. One was a man and one, one was a woman. Yeah. Is this a husband and wife situation? No, no, no. Oh. It was just two people, and for the reports, very clear. One was a one was a a, a manny, and one was a lady. Mm-hmm. Um, and it seems you know the man had his transplant and was fine because there was no other stories about him. Yep. But the woman's liver didn't heal normally. Okay. Uh, you know. Yeah. We, I, we, I get it. These things. These things are it complicated bits of yeah. A transplant's not nothing. <clears throat> um, during the follow up operation, the doctors who were doing it it wasn't um, Bram Bra, Bramhall discovered something unusual. It turns out Bramhall had used an argon beam, typically used to seal blood vessels, to Uh burn his initials, SB, into both the man and the woman's livers during the transplant operation. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Four centimetres high. Uh, Are we saying... SB. So the the other surgeon discovered this? When when had he done this? Uh, When he was doing the transplant. He's like SB was here kind of thing. He he freaking tagged the livers. Um, there is no suggestion that that is what caused the woman's transplant to go wrong, though. That okay. wasn't. It was just that as they were going in anyway, they went, "What the tits is going on?" And it turned out he'd done it to the guy as well. So usually that's not harmful, and the marks apparently would typically fade. Yeah, sure. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Like it's just. It's it's, it, I wrote it with a whiteboard pen. You can just rub it off. Proud it's of fine. my work. I'm proud of my work. Oh my god. Future generations should know this. Um, so the prosecutor said uh, Bramhall's actions were part of a, quote, highly unusual and complex case that so far was 
without legal precedent in criminal law. <laughs> and that's a good thing. That's a yeah, good thing. Yeah, it is a good thing. I, I, We've well, never seen on this On one before. side, I like when society <laughs> discovers new quirks. On the other side, I like that we haven't, uh, that this doesn't happen yeah. very much. And on the third side, how many times <laughs> does it go undetected? Uh, you know it's a lot more than zero. Yeah, it must be. Um, do you know, I, I, are you bothered be. by it? Not really. I'm more intrigued. Like if you found out that uh, you have had knee surgery or I've got... I, I, I have found out <coughs> that I've had that. No, no, no. I, I got a metal plate put in my arm uh, last year, uh, beginning of this year, last year. Um, yeah. if, I, if I found out that the surgeon had signed his name on there, would I be worried? I don't think so. No, why would you? What if they drawn an outline well, yeah, of the But, but here's the other thing. You know that probably is the, the brand of the company that made the... Yeah. Um, so... Acme. I... There you go, capitalism. One rule for the humans and another rule for the corporation. Ah, Corporations ah. are people, man. Haven't you been to America? I know, right? So, so there could be writing in me. I'm not. I'm not. That there, might, there might be. There might be. But I mean, look, the the, the legal precedent is revealed because they called it assault by beating. Like mm. that was classified as assault by beating. That's as close as they could get. They couldn't find any other. Yeah, malicious. Biological it's graffiti. Some, I can understand that you could you could say it's some form of bodily harm, and so it's sure. it's it's therefore it's inflicting know. unnecessary damage. Yeah. Um. So the the guilty pleas uh, quote was said by um, legal folk. The guilty pleas represent an acceptance that what he did was not just ethically wrong, but also criminally wrong. So it was beyond ethics. Mm -hmm. And he added, but it would up to be, it would be up to others to decide whether his license to practice surgery would be compromised. And? So the General Medical Council issued a warning. Don't do it again, mate. You're naughty. Don't, don't. Um, saying his conduct did not meet the standards required of a doctor. <laughs> so the General Medical Council, they said, uh, it, it risks bringing the profession into disrepute and it must not be repeated. <laughs> Whilst this failing in itself is not so serious uh, as to require any restriction on Mr. Bramhall's registration, it is necessary in response to issue this formal warning. Stop That's it. it. Stop it. That's it. He got a knuckle wrap. Uh, he was also fined ten thousand pounds, and his license was suspended for five months. Though he had, they note, ceased employment and relinquished his license to practice before any penalties were brought down. So they're going to review it again in five months. This was okay. in twenty twenty, so it would have been re-reviewed now. So that's cool. Uh, look, uh, of all of the things that I have had uh, heard surgeons and doctors do historically, uh, that's wacky, mm. but it's not it's not as malicious as many. So. Look, it could have been worse. It could have been more like, egregious. It could have been out of raw incompetence. It could have been out yeah, of, you know... Totally, totally. Lack of uh, cognitive capacity, as mm. you often read stories, well, I often do, about doctors who are continuing to work when maybe they should have gone and had a nice cup of tea and a lie down for yeah, sure. ever. Oh, and, and aside from that, th there are a lot of pressures on the whole field. Um, oh, God, yeah. Time pressures and... They're human and too. They almost are. They're human too. Oh, yes, I have science to back you. that up. Yeah. I have science to back that up later. Look at you. Fuck yeah. Look at you. I'm I'm on I'm on team surgeon at least until probably about tomorrow lunchtime and then whatever. <laughs> so that one's pretty gratuitous, kind of weird, could mm -hmm. be worse. But now I want to get to the the main tale, the meat of the, the meat of the those entrees. Yeah, okay. This, that, that, they just warm ups. How's your palate? Is it suitable? I'm I'm ready. Tingling. Um. So for this, uh, uh, so we got one. we got uh, leg as pillow, leg pillow, signed signed livers. Yep. Tag the organ, and now we go to the USA, of course for doctors behaving unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you a couple more quotes for context from my opening uh, sources. Kurdian Thot, I know. That's M a name? MD, yep. Kurdian okay. Thot, MD, an OBGYN in Virginia, said, look, this is what really keeps us up at night. It's not making a mistake in the operating room. It's the non-compliant patients. When patients don't do what we tell them, bad things can happen. Uh, sure. Does it really keep them up? according to Kurian Thot. Okay. Um, and Dr. Auden, enigmatically we know nothing more about Dr. Auden, uh, they, them, he, she, I don't know. Patients can get really detail-oriented about a surgery technique but forget to focus on basics like pre-op and post-op instructions. That's just as, <laughs> if not more, important. So it's like, yeah, checking up, what are you going to do to me, doctor? But beforehand, I'm getting drunk, eating, eating a feast. Uh, no, it's also the patient. What are you going to do? I told you to do this, this, and this, and instead you had... <clears throat> 12 packets of cigarettes and three burgers. No, that's what I'm breakfast. saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, don't, don't do that. Um, yeah, I went to get knee surgery one time and I was due to go in second and then suddenly they came rushing in and said, oh, you're going in first because the last guy just had a, a litre of water. And you were told, 
don't do that before an anesthetic. Ill by mouth. Yeah, for a long time. So that's what happens when people don't pay attention. I, I love the I love I love the phrase nil by mouth because yeah. you know what it means. It, it's it's there like, are other it's offices. Like, well, yes, that's true. That's true. But it's also uh, you know they they may have said to people in the past, "Don't eat anything," and they're like, "Oh, all right, uh, I'll have a smoothie then." Uh, oh, you're right. You're and then right. and then they've gone, okay, buddy, uh, don't don't drink any. And we're, the, we're not trying to trick you or punish you. There just are reasons. Don't put anything in there that goes to that. Just don't. don't. Just don't. Nothing. Nothing. It's the same as a mask attitude. Mum and dad keep telling me to wear a mask. They're mean. No, 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 no. There are reasons. <laughs> Sorry, this was being recorded during year two of the pandemic, so masks are quite a hot topic <laughs> for you people in the future. So... The man whose story I'm going to tell you here wanted to remain anonymous in the reports that followed. Mm -hmm. So all the sources referred to him as DB. Uh, He is the the patient? Yep. Yep. So obviously I'm going to call him Keith. No, DB. It's obviously Darren. Keith it is. Darren Barron. Darren Barron. (laughs) D-bags. So Keith was getting ready to have a wee procedure. Not a a wee procedure, a small procedure. His colonoscopy, or I'll put my Psycom uh, hat on, the up the butter scope. Yep. Much better name. Yep. That makes sense. People understand that. Where does it go? Up the butt. There you go. And what does it do? Scope. Yes. So colonoscopy doesn't mean anything. So it's happening in a Virginia surgical suite, Virginia in the America, mm-hmm. April 18, 2013. That date is critical. You don't have to remember it at all. All right. Good. Um, it's not a complicated procedure, but it's part of a, a swag of quite um, uh, noteworthy preparations. Yeah, yeah. And and also follow-up activity can be fairly important, but the pre-op stuff involves... Make sure you wipe beforehand. You don't need to by the end. You've had one, haven't you? I have. By the end, there's no wiping. It's just water. <laughs> so to be fair, in line with the quotes I uh, opened this story with, you know, d- do the business. Do what you need to Tell do. us the business. Tell us do the business. You so you got to drink, what is it? Last time I had one, or the only time I had one was years ago, you drink a... Uh, a, a, a criminal amount of laxative and basically sit in the toilet for, what, I don't know, about 16 hours, <laughs> drinking water, and by the end you can't tell which whole stuff is coming out of. <laughs> it just constantly comes out. And eventually you, I think the technical term is, shite yourself clean. <laughs> then when the previous uh, men- aforementioned scope it's a detox. goes up the butt, yes. it very much is. The pathway is clear. Yeah, all you see is healthy pink tissues. Yeah, it, which is not normal for that area of the body. It really isn't. And the, the guy who did it to mine, he goes, okay, I'm just going to explain it to you. He shows me a little picture of the twisted up colon, etc. And he goes, so what we're going to do is we're going to give you this little uh, drug and then we're going to pop this up your tail. <laughs> up your and I'm tail. sitting there going, pop it up my tail. You make it sound so Woo-hoo! not horrifying. <laughs> nine meters of camera. <laughs> yeah. Look, he has rehearsed that many, many times. Over and over again. Um, that has yeah. been his job to, yeah. part of it is obviously the doing, the other part is yeah. the explaining. Yeah. And he has settled on, a, on, on words that are true, Whilst being as innocuous as possible. Wonderfully benign, isn't it? Yeah. It's just like granddad's going to pop something up your tail. You're like, don't, <laughs> don't, don't, granddad, you're not a doctor. So um, being prepared and doing the right thing is important. And, um, you know, really, why would you mess it up? No one wants to do a second colonoscopy, particularly soon after the first. So it also requires being fully anaesthetized. Yes. At least it does in the US. I got twilighted okay. rather than fully knocked out. But anyway, that, that I had it done I don't know, 200 years ago. So, Keith recorded the doctor's instructions for post-op care because he didn't want to forget in his post-anesthetic haze. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's quite reasonable. He said, uh, the doctor said, uh, here's, what I'm, here's what you need to do afterwards. Sure, sure. I'm but, going to talk you through but it. But hopefully, hopefully they've been given to you in, in a variety of ways and will be... Keith is a particular man. All right, fair enough. I assume. So, he recorded it. Because, again, no one wants to do it twice. And so, while he was being prepped for the procedure, he also told his anaesthetist, Tiffany Ingham, that he had passed out before when having blood drawn, so it wasn't a fan of the old needles. Sure. And also that he was taking medication for a mild rash on his genitalia. Okay. So he told them all this. Yep. She noted that Keith wandered into the surgical suite and the colonoscopy commenced and everything went fine. Yes. Yeah. It's cool, huh? Good story. You like it? Yes, tell me. You, no. well, something hasn't gone fine, so bloody tell me. That's fine. On the way home, <sighs> Keith whips out his phone and says, okay, I've got to make sure I get everything right, so he presses play. Okay. It turned out he hadn't turned the recording off. Oh, my God. So it kept recording. Oh, my God. Okay. And he was, quote, shocked out of his anesthetic, uh, anesthesia-induced stupor. So Because all his clothes and his stuff had been put under a procedure table, as often happens in quick day surgeries. They just well, keep dump, it nearby. Yeah, yeah. dump gear in there. Um, and he discovered the surgical team had mocked and insulted him as soon as he drifted off to sleep. Are you serious? Yeah. So Ingham, the, um, I was going to say pediatrician, anesthetist, mm-hmm 
told the sedation patient that once he'd just passed out, five minutes of talking to you in pre-op, I wanted to punch you in the face and so you'd man up a little bit. Oh, So okay. she's saying this to his face. Obviously, he's unconscious, so she's, you know, tough she's, going. Well, yeah, it's not yeah. quite tough going. Yeah, okay. No, it's being a dick. Um, a medical assistant noted the man had a rash uh, around the old uh, champ. Ingham said, don't touch it because you might get some syphilis on your arm or something, and then added, it's probably tuberculosis in the penis, so you'll be all right. Probably tuberculosis in the penis. This is a, this is a medical professional. This is the anesthetologist. Okay, well, she can't diagnose, but anyway. Well, she's a fully-fledged doctor, though. Uh. Fully-fledged. <clears throat> when the assistant noted that the man reported getting queasy when watching a needle placed in his arm, Ingham said, well, then why are you looking at it, retard? Hey. Yeah, it's a direct quote. Um, the recording also captured Ingham mocking the amount of anaesthetic it took to sedate Keith. And Who she mocks about the amount of anaesthetic? Yeah. Like, like it takes an amount. Yeah. Like, it takes, I assume, more for larger people. Or and that's my assumption that Keith might not be a, uh, a light chap. Seriously, you don't... W- yeah. She also joked how it took him 15 minutes to change clothes. Like, to change out of his clothes and, I assume, put on those delightful okay, okay. paper pants yeah, and okay. smocks they give you. So that's pretty uncool. And this is all being recorded, remember. So Keith's listening to this. He's on the way home listening to this. <laughs> and and you can actually, from the sources that we can put up eventually, there's like a five-minute audio clip in one of the reports so you can actually listen to them talking. Oh, okay. It's, it's cool. I didn't bring it. I was thinking about it, but then I didn't. The gastroenterologist who performed the colonoscopy, Solomon Shah, commented that uh, another doctor they both knew, he and the anaesthetist, Ingham, would eat this guy for lunch. So... On what? On you, pussy, passing. Oh, okay, stuff, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. To, you know, don't like you. Shah, the um, doctor doing the thing, also said, "Look, when um, when they were discussing the rash, he said to the assistant, look, as long as it's not a bowler, you're okay.' Okay, well, so that could have gone in many directions. I, I, so. I assume that's just a that's just a calm down, like you know, yeah. just avoid the area and. I, I would like to think that way too. Shah, yeah. Shah was not the most egregious of the people, however. The doctors, he, Shah and um, Ingham, went on to discuss misleading and avoiding the man after he woke up. So Shah told him... Were you going to avoid it? Yeah. Are, are you the doctor? No, 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 no. <laughs> what? Excuse me. No, 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 no. no the, um, Shah told the assistant to convince the man that he had already spoken with Shah and that you just don't remember it, mate. What? Yeah, how cool is that? What? Yeah. Okay. So they don't like this guy. Obviously, they've considered Keith to be troublesome. Um, Ingham suggests, the anaesthetist, that Shah should receive an urgent fake page. She said, because I've done the fake page before. What, so you just drop out of a... a, 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 a oh, I've got to get that. <laughs> Did you hear that? Do, 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 do. I mean, I get it, I get it. Sometimes you want to be somewhere else and so you fake a phone call. I'm thinking of getting a pager now. <laughs> a friend of mine has got the... Um, you, you put your home screen as, as, a home, uh, as a phone call. Yeah. And so you go, oh, sorry, someone's calling and you just... Uh, it's, I, I gotta, it's uh, Keith. But uh, maybe yeah. not during surgery if that's your no, job. no. Or straight after. Um, and then Ingham goes on, round and round we go, wheel of annoying patients we go, where the land nobody knows. So Ingham just didn't like him. You, you know, she knows that she's getting paid for this and this is her job, right? Yeah, a lot too. You get paid pretty well as a... No, I, anaes- I know that. Anaes- I know that. Just, yeah. Um, so she then went on to mock Keith for attending the Mary Washington College because it was once an all-women's school and wondered out loud whether the patient was gay. And she meant this obviously as a yeah, as a yeah, yeah, yeah. Dego- dego- derogatory thing. I'm, I'm getting it. Um, then she says to the room, "I'm going to mark hemorrhoids on the on his chart, even though we don't see any, and we probably won't." And she actually did, and there weren't any. Wow. Um, this is not cool. It's really not. Yeah. I'm just going to make up a diagnosis because it'll be funny. And also because obviously it's an embarrassing of thing course. to have and if you have to go and talk about it or people go, Yeah, but oh. you don't, I mean, you don't yeah. necessarily have to tell everyone about it. But I, I did. <laughs> sure, Look, sure. I can't mean, talk now. What I'm saying Got is hemorrhoids. it's a choice. It's not like, it's not like our no. friend Keith yeah. uh, was forced to then tell everyone about this fake so, diagnosis. So, yeah, it looked like you got the job. We just have a few more questions. Uh, do you smoke? <laughs> no. Do you have hemorrhoids? Show us, show us your last surgery report. Yeah. I, I don't think you have to. Apparently you have hemorrhoids, Keith. I do not, sir. So she wrote it down. Um, she declared then the patient was a big wimp and said, people are into their medical problems. They need to have a medical problem. That's how they are. Shah replied, I call it North Virginia syndrome because they're in Virginia. But Shah did not discourage Ing- Ingham from her comments or actions and that included not stopping her from writing he has hemorrhoids on the chart. Yeah, see, that's definitely a thing. I, I, a get, I get 
uh, you know, the whole standard you walk past is the standard you accept. And yep. and she may have been making some comments that are that are gross, but there's a big jump there to yep. actually actually marking something yep. fake on the. Yeah. So Keith eventually saw a second gastroenterologist and another doctor who ended up prescribing him anti-anxiety me- medication. This is obviously after the fact. And he also went on to sue the two doctors and their practices for defamation and medical malpractice. I mean, and look, I know we can bag out America for suing about everything, but here I'm going... Well, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm right. down with that one. Yeah, righty. Um, he sought, according to most sources, he first asked for $1.75 million, though one source said he asked for more than $5 million in damages. I don't know what the appropriate number is. I, I, I got no feeling on... X, uh, yeah. yeah, lots. I think the appropriate number is as long as the people paying it feel some pain. Well, it just I was just thinking about this in terms of appropriate fine numbers. Uh, mm. Listener for listening in the future, uh, there's a story that went around just yesterday. Sydney's in the middle of a big lockdown yes. uh, for how Sydney does lockdowns. And and a group of I th- people, I don't know much about them other than that. They, they people, hi- you're not sure? Uh, they hired a, a super yacht because they wanted to go to Queensland. And so they, they broke lockdown um, by, around the water. By, by driving their super yacht that they hired up to Queensland. And they were all fined a certain amount. But um, the cost of the super yacht was in the many, many, many thousands um, per day. So the day thousand something. bucks ahead really So the thousand bucks ahead yeah. didn't seem to dissuade them. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like there's a little bit, I keep keep thinking of the, is it the Swiss fine Swiss, insist, yeah, where you go, yeah. no, no, we fine you based on your income, not yep. based and uh, your speeding fine is a hundred dollars. Yours is a hundred thousand euro. Yeah, I, I feel like I yep. feel like there might be occasions where punishments need to fit the person. I, I I agree, and I think in principle that's what the the sewage. I think that's the technical term. Numbers should be when you are making the sue <laughs> yes. of, of the people. So the complaint from uh, Keith was that he was verbally brutalized and suffered anxiety, embarrassment, and a loss of sleep for several months. The doctor's lawyer said, yeah, but he didn't suffer any physical injury or miss any days of work, so, you know, sh- shut up. Oh, yeah, cool, it. cool, don't worry cool. About it. He, just, he just listened to p- – yeah, yeah, I, I feel about like, it. you know, the anxiety of uh, you're going completely under, not even – it's different from being asleep. And, you know, everyone's got those n- – yeah. not everyone has anxieties, but it's like the – you know, you, you want your bedroom to be a bit of a, a sanctum. You know, you're, you're protected, yeah, you're safe. Yeah. I know, you know, exactly. That's why I burn the patchouli. Exactly. And uh, and sleep is nowhere near as deep as going under with um, no. with anaesthetics. And then you've, you're vulnerable. And I think the idea – I know. The idea that people can not be 100% nice to you then – Honestly, not- I just assume they're not. I, I go and go, I don't, I don't give a fuck. Say what you want. Just do the job. Look, to be honest, yes, but but I but don't know. But I think, I think you want to be in, in, in best nurturing hands. You do. Although they asked me in my pre-admission, what, what are your expectations of this? And I said, uh, efficient and effective. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and they rang me up and said, oh, yes, we're looking at your forms, yeah, and then we see here, are you expecting, okay, yeah, efficient and effective, okay, we'll make a note, make a note of that. And what I said, other, does what anyone other? not want that? Oh, they want like cuddly or, you know, the doc- uh, hot nurse. <laughs> I didn't write that. <laughs> hot doctor. What? No, 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 uh, but I'm straight, and doctors are men. No, no, hot doctor. And, and nurses are, are girls. Does didn't we discuss this? <laughs> Man, I try, I try to, I try, I try. <sighs> You do, you do, and look, it's it's a steep hill to climb, I agree. Um, the doctor's lawyers also argued that the recording was illegal. But Keith's attorneys uh, pointed out in Virginia, they have a, it's a one-party consent state, <laughs> which is a, f- ignore this particular situation, you've got to be fucking kidding me. It means that only one person involved in a conversation needs to agree to the recording. I consent to this. That's an awesome law. Yeah, Such- I consent to me secretly recording you. <laughs> Because I'm talking too. I do love, though, that there's some possibility of consent, consent where no one consented to no, this. No, that's not right then. <laughs> okay, I get that's like a, a third part. Two people are talking. They've got to be in part. the recording. So yeah, someone, yeah. at least as long as one person I consent, apparently that's okay then, which to me makes me go, um... Look, I get it, and, um, and it, but but the I would say here the, the point at which, and maybe he has meant this, I don't know, mm. Not being deliberate, uh, I know that the law doesn't care about that so much, but still, I think the yeah. fact is, you know, I found this by accident. So yeah, so they, um, they so no, um, so a, a lawyer who specialises in defamation law, uh, I don't know if it's a boy or a girl, Lee Berlick, said, "I've never heard of a case like this," and they went on to say, uh, Berlick went on to say, "Comments between doctors typically would be privileged, but Keith claimed his recording showed there was at least one and as many as three other." people in the room during the procedure that they were discussing matters beyond the scope of the up the butter scope 
So the quotes ran, usually all legal publication requires its publication to someone other than the plaintiff. So being put out in the world is the publication here. Okay. If one of the doctors said to someone else in the room that this guy's had syphilis and TB and that person believed it, that could be a defamation claim. Okay, yeah. But then he says, that's uh, sorry, Lee says, th- that's up for the jury to decide. Were the statements literal assertions of facts or mm. was meant to be taken that way? So what was the result? Any guesses? Uh, it, well, definitely it's the 5 million. Oh, 20, 20 million. No, can you, can I don't you know. see through this again? You're just amazing. Um, so Berlick, the defamation lawyer, said the jury apparently was just so offended at this unprofessional behaviour that they're going to give the plaintiff a win. That's what happens in the real world. Okay. So the impression I got was Berlick was kind of like... Mm. Uh. Anyway, um, although the remarks made by Ingham and Shah did not probably leave the operation room, or the operating theatre, experts in libel and slander say, this is again a quote, defamation does not have to be widely published, merely said by one party to another and understood by the second party yeah, sure. to be fact when it isn't. No, I, I look. I don't. I don't think defamation has to. You know, you could say to one other person a, a lie about someone else, and I totally. If it was uh, received or receivable as fact, then you got an issue. Yeah. One of the jurors said, um, "As a defamation lawyer myself." Well, I know you're. you're, you're I mean, a le- a, alleged, alleged, gifted amateur. Yeah, exactly. A man's gonna have a hobby. Yeah, sure. Why not defamation law? I really don't know anything about defamation law. We knew enough to agree with me then. I haven't kicked or not kicked anyone off a cliff ever. You sure? I don't know. You must have been one of them. <laughs> Whoa. Mind games. One of the jurors said uh, there was uh, there was not much defence because everything was on tape. So it was like, you, you, how do you defend against that? Here it all is. That, that uh, juror went on to say, we finally came to a conclusion that we have to give him something, Keith, just to make sure yeah. this doesn't happen again. Hey, we, we gotta, yeah. Give him something. Throw him a bone. <laughs> Uh, he said. So he said. Went on to say the man's attorney asked for one point seven million. So that's that's the most common figure. But the final amount was a compromise between one juror who thought Keith deserved nothing, and at least one who thought Keith deserved more. Split the difference. Yeah. Well, kind of. So here's how they broke it down. Uh, really? Yeah. Here's some numbers. You were wondering. So it's a hundred k for the defamation and fifty thousand for each of the comments about one for having syphilis, one for TB. So apparently that's worth fifty really? grand each. They're, they're, they're fifty grand. Okay. So the jury, twelve people, lay people. Oh my god! I know you've got to this. kind of work out something, but yeah. so th- that was a hundred k, two hundred k for medical malpractice, which I assume is for writing the, the writing. Because other than yeah. that, I don't see any. And two hundred k for punitive damages. So you got five hundred grand in total. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know if that – it depends how much he was really, you know, damaged by what happened and what he heard. I mean, but, but, but the point about this is is it's not to not to buy Keith a new home. It's more about giving giving a punishment to yep. people that, that yep. did something that is patently not right. Yep, bash the people who were bad. That's the point. So what happened to the doctors? Um, just to add to this, a former president of the Academy of Anesthesiology said, uh, these types of conversations, the conversations in the room – are not only offensive, but frankly stupid, because we can never be certain that our patients are asleep and wouldn't have recall. Yeah. Not the main reason, but yes. Uh, but d- yes. <laughs> Former president. Yeah, yeah, Who yeah. Knows you, know, you know, we can never... We, we, otherwise, we would have them all the time. You if could we could get be busted. Certain. Think yeah, it through. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, it's like the, the text chats in a Zoom, you know. You know yeah, 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 that can be captured. That could be the reason. Um, no? Unless you want to. Yeah, And sure. then impossible. But it's also the whole. That's the reason why if you don't have religion, everyone's going to be an evil shit because yeah, there's no yeah, god. Yeah, maybe, looking maybe, you. maybe just don't be a horrendous asshole. Yeah, don't. I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes it's really hard not to. Look, you know, doctors are people that may have come up. Yeah, and and assholes are doctors too. Yes, but not all includes. No, not no, all. no, 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 no. All doctors are people technically, but not and not all, all assholes are doctors. doctors. Exactly, and not all doctors are assholes. Yeah, I'm bargaining on that. So, um. Ingham, the anesthetist, could not be reached for comment by any of the reports I read, and her attorney would not recall return any I calls. It. I get it. That's fair. She worked for a company called Aesthesis Anesthesia. Aesthesis Anesthesia. Too many of Just those rolls off, yeah, it? Too terrible. many vowels banged together. Um, out of Bethesda, I think it's Maryland. And the jury ruled that they should pay 50 grand of the 200 of punitive damages. So 50 grand, which they would not have given a shit about. Um, the officials did not return any call seeking for comment, but a spokesperson, and, and I argue if we're going to be non-gendered about spokes, it should be spokester. Sp- 
spokester. Should be a spokester in a chester. I think it'd be way cooler. A spokesperson is still non-gendered. But, but this I, is even I, easier. It sounds less awkward. I'm a spokester. You can be a boy or a girl. It's going to take a while to get that transition. but yeah, I'm doing I, it. I'm bringing I, it. You heard it here first. Spokester. Yeah, okay, I support. I'm the chairster of the ethics committee. Oh, that's fabulous. Because you can't be a chair because that's an object. You just be a chair. That's an object. All right. You can be a chair. I'll be a car then. Fuck you. And that stuff. <laughs> so the spokester for aesthesis anesthesia said, we apologise to this patient and regret the distress and suffering that this most unfortunate incident has caused. The anesthesiologist involved is no longer with our practice. There you go. That's a that's your standard notes app apology. Like, but, uh, but then they took real action. Okay. Once we learned of this incident, we assured uh, that every anesthesia staff Body cams. Member, body cams. They're all wearing body cams all the time? Better. Oh, okay. Better. We made sure they reviewed and reiterated their pledge to abide by our professional organisation's code of ethics. Did the pledge say, Boom. don't don't talk about patients while they're... No shit talk. <laughs> I love it. Don't worry, we took action. We made everyone take the pledge. Don't don't be a dick. Uh, look, maybe it wasn't on the pledge before. Oh, uh, they, they said reiterate. Okay. They didn't say rebuild. Um, anyway, so Ingham no longer works for them. State licensing records indicate she moved to Florida, but they caught, the <laughs> journalists called a bunch of numbers and couldn't find her. I don't want to judge Florida, but that sounds like uh, a... Everyone wants to judge Florida. That seems to be what it's for, yeah. unless you live there. Um, and as for Shah, the colonoscopist, uh, during the court, uh, during the proceedings, he was dismissed as a defendant in the case. Like, yeah, don't worry about it. Okay. Off you go, champ. He didn't do anything. No. Oh, you got no, he just stood there and watched it. Um, lawyers uh, for both Shah and Ingham would not discuss whether anything happened, whether there was any disciplinary action by the Virginia Board of Medicine, and no actions were listed on the Virginia Board of Medicine's websites. So journos had a dig, mm-hmm. found nothing. So, yeah, it doesn't sound like much happened after Woods. And okay. when, you, when you look up Ingham and try and find out things like Ingham apology, there are lots of hits and none of them talk about an apology. They just talk about the same story in different ways. So the employers apologise, but not... Well, the, not the, the, yeah, the employers apologise and kind of explain. There's a whole bunch yeah. of defamation that, that people say, as an amateur defamation lawyer myself, yeah. yes, yes, uh, yes. if you if you apologise, it, it may look like an admission of guilt. So best not to. Yeah. That's always been my policy. Never apologise. And I'm sorry for that. So basically, there are many arguments that, that flew around about this case in particular, but also our, our mad graffiti, liver graffitist, that... Because they hold such a trusted role in society and they yeah. deal with us at our weakest, we need to have super high standards. Yeah, to, for, uh, that's, for that's, I was just thinking that's probably the bit on the oath uh, is yeah. that I, I can imagine an anesthetist's oath that says, um, as you put people into sleepy sleep, yeah. uh, you got to look after them. And look yeah. after might be a bit more holistic than yeah. just make sure they don't. Uh, also, you say super dumb shit. <laughs> like you just say crazy shit when you're on some <laughs> drugs. And or many people do. I'm yeah. told I have to. Um, but I'll, that's another episode. It could take quite a while. Um, but look, we can't forget surgeons of people. And I mentioned I've got some evidence. Mm. So just to close this out here, um, there was an article reporting on some research in The Economist not from not that long ago. And it not only says surgeons of people, but it goes on to say, and people are animals and animals often fight. Yeah, I, I, okay. This is why the expert on animal behaviour, Franz de Waal, and his but, colleague, he, Laura Jones... Was looked, brought in to comment on surgeons? Looked at operating theatres to see... Oh, wow. <laughs> that gets better. Wow. I know. Looked in to see if the methods DeWile had honed studying chimpanzees might you use to improve surgical practice. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Look, I, 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 I get... I get an animal behaviour person, mm-hmm. you know, going, okay, I wonder if I can translate my my research to a place that might parallel. Like you could go yeah. uh, school playground yeah. or place where people are eating together. Non-surgical office place. Or, or sex uh, or anything or sex. that we actually share with animals. Not, well, not we share sex with it, kind of, yeah. so to no, speak. No, as in, as in we do this, you know, some people do, but, yeah. but humans do the sex, animals do the sex. Humans do the play, animals do the play. Separately. Animals don't do the surgery. No. Well, we don't know that. I, I don't think they do. You can't prove a negative. I don't think they... Prove to me they don't. I'm sure there are ants. I'm sure that the <laughs> ants do freaking <laughs> surgery or some shit. Like the queen head broken. Is, the queen is dying. <laughs> Grab new head, make me make two of me into one of me. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm comforted or horrified by that, but they did it. So Jones, his colleague, observed... Uh, some people are, you know, it's it's it might just be a, you know, to the world, uh, to the... yeah. Uh, to a cobbler, the world is a shoe. You know, yeah. to an animal behaviour. I study instead, chimps. Yeah, Surgeons chimps everywhere. Chimps. All I see is chimps. Just monkeys. Were they to call them monkeys or is that racist? Uh, I don't know. I can't tell. I don't anymore. care. 
I don't care. You can you oh, can be. I work you, so hard on you. No, no. I keep my <laughs> I keep my wokeness within the human family. I, you know, oh, I, no, yeah, no so animal privileged. ethics count. But, you know, I'm I, totally going to hit I you up on think, Twitter for that. I don't think. Well, in in their defence, there's probably a term for themselves that we haven't asked chimpanzees yet, yeah. and and us declaring that they're chimpanzees. Maybe regardless, it's all you know. It could be like calling Inuit Eskimo. Well, indeed. All we got to do is we got to ask, mm. and maybe ask. they'll tell us. Or maybe Deval can help us. So Jones went in and observed 400 uh, interactions between 400 doctors, nurses, and technicians during 200 operations. Wow. They only acted, interacted twi- twice per operation? No. no. 400 interactions, 200 no. operations. Yeah, yeah, between, no, 400 doctors, nurses, and technicians oh, okay. sure, during sure, sure, 200 sure, sure, sure. interactions. Oh, he observed yeah. interactions yeah. between, yeah, okay. She, she, she. Jones is his uh, assistant, not his, his colleague. They don't specify in this article what her specialty is, though, only his. Speaking of sexualism... Yeah, indeed. Anyway, so she logged, she observed these uh, operations and she logged all the non-technical communications that she spotted. So she classified them as cooperative, which was likely to lead to better surgical outcomes, conflictive. We got some examples? No. Oh. They didn't give me any. Um, conflictive was potentially jeopardizing patient safety. So cooperative, conflictive, or neutral. Oh, okay. She then uh, put this up in 2018 in PNAS. Proceedings of the National Academy of Science. Yes, sir. After analysing more than 6,000 exchanged insults and pleasantries, she found the following. <laughs> a lot of insults and pleasantries. Yeah, they're not the same. No, they're, they're not d- the same. <laughs> well, that one is cooperative and one is conflictive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Surgical communication does indeed mimic wild animal behaviour. Both collaborative and hostile. <laughs> so relaxed. I, I really hope they're flinging poo in there. I'm going to try. I'm going to ask tomorrow. Um, tomorrow when I come out, I'm going to check them under my fingernails. In particular, as happens among wild animals, individuals jostle for dominance over others of their own sex while trying to ingratiate themselves with members of the opposite sex. Wow. This is science. Okay. Predominantly male surgical teams that were led by a man were twice as likely to experience conflict as similar teams led by a woman. Huh. So huh. it could have been all blokes, but if a woman was leading it, they were less likely to be flinging poo at each other. Oh, okay. Um, but in predominantly female teams, it didn't matter who was leading them, there was just less conflict. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Um, collaborative interaction was higher, regardless of whether the lead surgeon was a man or woman, as I said. So basically, the leader should be the opposite sex of their underlings, seems to be one of the oh, suggestions. Okay, okay. No I, worries. You know, it feels a little bit... Solved. Uh, feels yeah, a little it feels bit solved. No, it feels a little bit evolutionary psychology applied to a highly yeah. technical... But anyway. I, solved. Yeah, okay. Chicks run chaps and chaps run chicks. Ah, I don't know. They didn't actually I say to know. do that, but you know, they, they, they do have suggestions. They're saying uh, previous research suggests between 70 and 80% of surgical mishaps are caused by interactions between the people going wrong. But yes, yes. And what are the other ones caused by? Other. <laughs> Like, like bombs. The building fell a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Wrong tool. Uh, yeah, okay. Electrical I, I, short. Yeah, sure. Wrong coloured gauze. <laughs> um, so their suggestions. This work suggests this might be improved by, in the short term, mixing and matching personnel. Oh, my God. There you go. Diver- <laughs> diversity. It. No, I'm, I'm happy with diversity for other reasons, but this idea of let's just mix and match. Yeah, yeah. Like just middle, middle, muddle them around. Long term, this is, this is the real, this is the award-winning point, encouraging more women into what is now a male-dominated profession. Yes. So that mixing and matching is easier to do. Uh, so we solved it. They are people. We've confirmed that. Yeah, it would be nice because if there they're was, like animals. Um, uh, more justice reasons rather than we, you didn't see. You didn't did they check for um, surgical outcomes or just how much? Not, not in this. Not in this brief. Which, but, but it might have been highly conflict. But but, but there was fucking good awesome. Surgery. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's maybe. like the Beatles. Like imagine if the Beatles are doing surgery on they you. They never you got They loved each John other. John Lennon and Paul McCartney loved fighting over other. what surgery to do on you. That could have been better. Letter B could have been totally better. Yeah, exactly. So back to our three stories then. We found out they're people. We've had some warnings. So which situation do you think was worse? So, so we've got leg as a pillow. Yeah. Uh, uh, graffiti liver. Or the... Sw- or the or shit talking the, the person and putting a fake um, diagnosis of hemorrhoids on their... Uh, do you know, it's really interesting because none of them are actually bad outcomes necessarily. Like in terms of the surgery. It, it seems not. Um, yes. I think they all show a disrespect to patients. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, different forms of disrespect to patients. Yeah. Um, which one is worse? I, you know, I, I don't actually think. 
I, I actually think the one the one I will remove from being the worst is probably the signing the liver. Really? Uh, yeah. Because really, that would be my worst because of the potential for damage right there and then. Yeah, unnecessary. Sure. No, but I'm I'm assuming I'm assuming this 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 guy knows what he's doing. So I'm like, he, I don't mind that. I, I don't want my liver burnt if it doesn't need to be burnt. Uh, look, probably particularly if the reason I'm doing that is I'm getting I'm, a new I'm one. I'm feeling I'm feeling that this guy was working under a um a, perf- a, a desire to do the best possible job. Uh, so good at yeah, it's true. So he wanted to tag the other. T- so, so so good, good that he wanted to tag it. The yeah, yeah. other two don't appear to be have been motivated by doing the best possible job for. Oh, the, the leg is a pillow, maybe. Uh, how they could that? have been motivated. I'm not saying they did well. I, where is that the best possible job? <laughs> he needed to put his head up, and we only had his thigh. No, no, no. That doesn't appear. To, that appears to be intense corner cutting. Intense corner cutting. <laughs> And 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 did I mention they were under? It's a difficult medical. And system. clearly, the anaesthetologist at the end did did not appear to be motivated by best possible no, job. No, not even didn't, didn't a hint. care. And quite clearly, in the transcript, appears to be whatever. I I, I hate this job. Oh fuck I'm, yeah! I'm looking to get fired. She she didn't seem to be happy. I, I mean, look, I get everyone can have a bad day, but there are ways to manifest it. I've I've heard an explanation for the um uh, the signing his initials thing before mm. that it was a brain snap. You know, it was a. He felt he had done a great job, and his brain just went. This is so good. I've, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm an artist. I'm an artist. I must. I must. And in that sense, he all the way through had high duty of care. It, you know, it would right seem there, he's, so, yeah. he's, he's caring. He's doing the best possible job, yeah. and then his brain just got confused. It just, you know, well, just, it's <laughs> true. And to be fair, he was not kicked out by the governing board. And if they'd had a reason to, I think they would have done oh, so. Oh, definitely, like, you, you definitely. Don't mess around with that. Well, I think flipping it around, though, there are uh, takes a long time to train a good surgeon. Uh, How see, long? Like months? Oh, it's uh, no, no, no. Like there's a, a weekend course, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Cert four, and and a bit more. I think an online course and a weekend course, and yeah, then yeah. you. Do, I don't confirm on that. Like no, you're, if you're, you're, you're if you're looking to do surgery, listener, uh, yeah, double check. Look it up. Double check. But I think there's a little bit of training. And yeah, so yeah, I can yeah. imagine that the board is like, uh And so you don't you don't just get anyone to do it. So if you were if you you wake up tomorrow yeah. after your little bit of a surgery poo, yeah. uh cut, cut, snip, snip, so so, uh, which one uh-huh. which one has happened to you are you most horrified by? Most horrified by? Oh, anything that isn't shit talk. I don't mind if they shit talk me because I, I assume they will. Like I get to the moment I walk through a medical procedure place, I'm like, <laughs> I'm a lump of be- uh, meat. <laughs> Anything below the brain, fucking whatever. You're gonna, you're gonna laugh, cry. Well, so you I don't, don't mind the shit talk. You, you can care. handle. You can handle. I don't know. care. Also, I figured there are much more slovenly, unkempt, weird-looking people than me out there. <laughs> I'm, I'm not the tip of any iceberg. <laughs> I don't uh, want to be signed on the internals. I don't. I just don't want anything extra. That's what I said. Effective. What if? What if? What effective if, and efficient. What if Banksy teamed up with your surgery team? To, he, he can draw a picture of us. And he can, and he he can, can draw, draw some little war rat graffiti on, inside on Effective, your liver and then it's sewn up. You know it's not efficient. You know that people will sign up to do that. They'll of say, I've got so a Banksy yeah. inside yeah. my anus. Like they went inside there and put a Banksy in there. A banus? I, I, don't, I don't want it. The Wholesome Show is me, Will Grant, and him, Rod Lamberts, or as he calls himself, Ron Toilet. I don't know why. I don't know why. But but if you're getting surgery soon, it's a strong name. Um, I hope it goes well. Thank you. It goes well. Hope it goes well, man. It will go well. I can smell it. We'll be back next week, listener, maybe, or the week after or something. We'll be next week. Feeling pretty good.